Today's case starts with a simple night out, a typical teenage experience meant to be a cherished memory. However, the cheerful atmosphere soon turned to gloomy. By the end of the night, a promising young life would be brutally ended, leaving confusing clues that would puzzle investigators for decades. As the shadows grew longer and a sense of fear covered the once peaceful community, a hard truth emerged even in the most unexpected places. No one is entirely safe from the darkness within human nature. This is a tale of one happy family whose world was destroyed and their relentless pursuit for justice to find out what happened to their son's life. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeco, your go-to place for uncovering some interesting cases from all over the world. We are the go-to place to bring you the latest and most detailed information. If you find this intriguing, we'll be thrilled if you could subscribe to our channel. Also, hitting that like button really goes a long way in helping our channel grow. Your support means a lot to us. So, grab your blanket for comfort and let's dive into this fascinating case together. The night that would change the Savo family's life forever took place in Newburgh Heights, a quiet Cleveland suburb along the Cuyago River. Despite its peaceful tree-lined street and well-kept homes, this bonded community revealed a much darker reality on the night tragedy struck. At the center of it all was Harvard Avenue, a seemingly ordinary residential street with a more disturbing back history. Here, an unremarkable duplex nestled among other unremarkable homes became the stage for a series of events that would always be remembered in the city's darkest mysteries. On this unassuming street, Kurt Sova, a 17-year-old high school student, experienced a life-altering event. A typical teenager in many ways, Kurt's journey that night took him down a path from which he would never return. Born to Ken and Dorothy, Kurt was the youngest of four brothers and shared a close bond with his parents. Growing up in a modest blue-collar neighborhood on the outskirts of Cleveland, Kurt embodied the all-American youth. Described by his family as well-behaved and good-natured, he never found trouble with neighbors, school, or the police. According to his eldest brother Kevin, Kurt had a fun-loving spirit and a natural comedic talent that endeared him to others. He was very funny, a real comedian. Kevin fondly recalled his voice reflecting both warmth and sorrow. He loved sports and might have been the most talented of us all. Later did the Sova family know that their lives were on the brink of a profound change due to the events unfolding on the streets of their peaceful hometown. On the night of Friday, October 23rd, 1981, Kurt's evening kicked off just like any other. After ditching school, he spent the day goofing around with friends. However, as the night approached, a series of choices would lead to a chain of events ending in an unimaginable tragedy. Initially planning to hit a local carnival, Kurt's cause changed when his friend Samuel mentioned a Halloween party at a nearby duplex. So, off they went to the unassuming place on Harvard Avenue. What unfolded inside the duplex became the talk of the town, sparking intense speculations. According to Samuel, Kurt downed a lot of Everclear, a potent drink unfit for his small frame and little alcohol experience. As the night went on, Kurt's condition worsened and Samuel took him outside for some fresh air. When Samuel went back briefly to grab his jacket, he returned to find Kurt had just vanished. Despite a quick search, Kurt's whereabouts remained unknown, prompting his worried parents to report him missing the next day. Over the next five anxious days, the Sova family and local authorities desperately looked for the teenager. Strange incidents added to the mystery. A store owner claimed a stranger predicted Kurt's demise within days. Another witness said they saw Kurt with an unknown person getting inside a van that sped away. 
As these unsettling stories circulated, the duplex residents initially denied any knowledge of the party or Kurt's presence. It took evidence from a pizza delivery person to make them admit to the gathering, saying Kurt got incapacitated from too much rules. Five endless days after Kurt's over mysteriously vanished, a group of boys playing near a warehouse on Harvard Avenue stumbled upon a horrifying sight. There, in a shallow ravine, lay the breadless self of the missing teenager. Kurt's unalive self was arranged in a creepy Christ-like pose, his bright yellow t-shirt standing out against the dull surroundings. Strangely, one shoe rested in a pile of rocks just 12 feet away, while the other was just nowhere to be found. As the community grappled with the shocking news, Kurt's body was taken to the county coroner's office to understand the circumstances of his untimely demise. Yet the autopsy results only added to the mystery. Besides minor scratches and bruises, Kurt's body showed no obvious signs of harm or foul play. Although his blood alcohol level was elevated at 0.11, it wasn't enough to be fatal, and tox reports found no traces of substance use or underlying health issues that could explain his sudden death. In a confusing conclusion, the coroner labeled Kurt's death as a probable accident pointing to a confusing condition called instantaneous physiologic death. Essentially, it was a diagnosis born out of not having a clear explanation. As the investigation unfolded, more disturbing incidents and unanswered questions arose, intensifying the Silver family's distress. Dorothy, Kurt's mother, received a strange call in the early hours before her son's body was found. The caller later identified as the party host, claiming someone, maybe Kurt, had been sleeping in her basement. Yet when Kurt's father, Ken, rushed to check, he found only a messy cot and no sign of his son. In a chilling turn, flower delivery with a frightening note arrived at a local record store strangely foreshadowing Kurt's fate just days before his body was found. Surrounding this unsettling event, a haunting revelation emerged less than just 24 hours before finding Kurt's what was left of him. His father had searched the exact ravine where he was found. So how could Kurt's body appear in a place recently inspected? Convinced that their son's tragedy was no accident, the Silver family believed someone, possibly even a party goer from that fateful night, held the truth about what happened to their beloved Kurt. As the investigation into Kurt's demise unfolded, a series of strange coincidences and suspicious characters added more confusion to an already complex situation. Weeks before the grim discovery, a stranger had approached a local record store manager, evilly predicting Kurt's perish and leaving more questions than answers. Initially dismissed as the confusions of a disturbed person, the man's claims took a darker meaning after Kurt's body was found. Authorities briefly detained and questioned him, but lacking solid evidence, they had to let him go a decision that will haunt them in the years to come. In an unsettling turn, just three months after Kurt's tragedy, another young victim, 13-year-old Eugene Kevert, was discovered without life in a similar ravine, missing one shoe and gone for days before being found. Faced with a series of unexplained events and dissatisfied with official findings, the Silver family launched a relentless effort to uncover the truth about their son's fate. This determination grew as allegations of corruption, negligence, and mishandling of evidence within the Newburgh Heights Police Department surfaced. Kurt's mother, Dorothy, held firm in her belief that someone, maybe even one of the party girls from that night, 
at crucial information about her son's final hours. I won't find peace until I get answers, she declared, her voice filled with a mother's unwavering love. I'll keep searching until the day I'm laid to rest. Over the years, a few individuals emerged as potential suspects in Kurt's mysterious tragedy. The party hosts, initially deceptive about the event, remained under intense scrutiny. Authorities also tried to identify Franco, the unknown man Kurt was seen with just days before he was found. Then, there was this puzzling figure of the record store prophet whose chilling foresight raised suspicions about his movements. Despite these shaky leads, the true circumstances of Kurt's death stayed frustratingly out of reach, slipping through the fingers of investigators like grains of sand in an hourglass. After Kurt Sover's confusing demise, the impact echoed not only through Newburgh Heights, but far beyond its close community. As the years passed, the case stubbornly stayed unsolved, a lingering wound that refused to heal. The Sover family's quest for justice faced frustrating hurdles and institutional letdowns. Those accusations of corruption, neglect, and mishandling of evidence within the police department overshadowed the investigation, leaving the family feeling betrayed by the authorities meant to protect them. In a harsh turn of fate, Kurt's parents, Ken and Dorothy, passed away in 2001 and 2014, forever deprived of the answers they had desperately sought for. Two of Kirk's brothers, Keith and Kenneth, also left this world, leaving behind only Kevin to carry on this family truth-seeking mission. Yet, even as the decades went by, the impact of Kurt's death continued to ripple outward, refusing to fade into the forgotten tragedies. In late 2019, a glimmer of hope arose when the New York Heights Police Department Cold Case Unit joined forces with students from Tiffin University to re-examine evidence and shed new light on the case. The following year, Kurt's story caught the attention of CrimeCon, a true crime convention that taps into insights from both experts and amateur sleuths. The Silver family's enduring determination was thrust into the national spotlight, rekindling the possibility of finally uncovering the truth. While the path of resolution has been tough and marked by setbacks, the unwavering commitment to Kurt's remaining loved ones stands out as a testament to family bonds and the human desire for justice. As the investigation continues, one truth remains clear. Kurt's over story is a haunting reminder that even in seemingly ordinary places, darkness can lurk and the quest for answers must persist no matter how dim the light may seem. Well, before you head out, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell. This way, you continue to be updated on the latest true crime cases we uncover. We are so thankful to have you as part of our community, exploring captivating mysteries that keep us all intrigued. Stay curious, and remember, even closed books hold untold pages waiting patiently for revelation. Thanks for joining us and we can't wait to see you on the next exploration. Until next time.